Hi everyone, it's Diane. How are ya? Welcome back. I'm so happy that you're spending a little bit of time with me this morning crafting. Welcome to new subscribers. Welcome back to all of my my subscribers who've been with me. Um, we are continuing this week with our A to Z project in 2023, trying to use all of the stamp sets that I have from Stampin' Up! that are on my shelf here. And I wanted to answer a couple questions. Thanks, by the way, for giving me those thumbs up and leaving some comments. You really are helping. It's making a difference. I appreciate it so much. But I have a couple things to address here before we get into the card. Um, somebody had asked if I was a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and um, mentioned that I was using retired products. I am using some retired products. Some of them are new. Uh, some of the paper we're using today is newer. My stamp sets are a lot of the older ones, which is why we're doing this project. Because I have some that are very old that were never really used. So we're going to use those. I am a retired Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I no longer sell products, but I have a lot. So the whole um, concept of this project is to use the products that we have. If there is a card that I'm making and you like it, you don't necessarily have to have, like for example today, Balloon Bash. If you don't have Balloon Bash, this card actually would have been easier to make with other stamp sets. If you have another stamp set, use this card idea and use your stamps. We're going to use Balloon Bash today. And from the end of the alphabet, we had Wildflower Meadow, which I will probably use in tomorrow's video. I did find that by breaking these up into two videos and making them shorter, I had better responses. So I'm thinking when people see that the video is almost an hour long, it's... Uh, they think it's too complicated or whatever, but it did do better if I broke them into two. And actually, tomorrow's might be two videos because I'm thinking about making an alcohol ink background that I can use this on. And folks might not be interested in that, so they may only want to watch the stamping part of it, the card making part of it. So we'll get in that, into that tomorrow. When I started the balloon bash, stamp card today I was thinking oh great I have a die that goes with that and I pulled out the dies with the balloons on it and stuff and started cutting things out and I was thinking you know this doesn't really match up and then I realized that those dies are going to go with the next set balloon adventure and that's next week so I already have a jump on next week's card I guess um the other thing I wanted to remind you of is if you go back and watch my February 27th video, and I will link that in my description box below, as well as all the dimensions for today's card, I have a giveaway that if you respond by the 17th, um, give it a thumbs up, give the video a thumbs up, and comment in there if you are a card maker or a journal maker, or if there are particular products you wish you had more of in your stash, maybe you're a new crafter and you don't have a lot, I would love to share some of the extra stuff that I have. Because along with doing this project this year, I still have a lot of items that I haven't used. And I, I would like to just share those. So go back and watch that video, leave a comment, and be entered to get some products. So when I was doing this card, I was thinking, you know, I, to be honest, this if I had to go back and do it again, this isn't a stamp set that I probably would have bought, only because there's only a couple things on here. These are rather large stamps. So they take up the whole front of your card. And I thought the best way to use that would probably be on a pretty designer series paper, uh, letting the paper do the work for us, and then just decorate up the inside a little bit. So I did that, and I thought it was kind of boring. That's way too easy to show you guys on doing a stamping ink on paper. So you could do that if you want a simple, quick card. I thought, let's let's um, dress it up a little bit by doing some, some 
type of a fancy fold or a fun fold. So I started out by using the layered mats uh, layout that we've, we've done this in the past and we'll do it again. But I really prefer this when I have a large image that stamps on to the white panels. These little balloons just didn't do it and I had to fill in around it with confetti. So to make it into a fun fold, I decided I would do a pop-up in the middle. That's great, but I don't know what I want to put on the inside. <laughs> I don't know. So I played around a little bit more and I thought if I'm going to do a pop-up in the middle, let's, let's do something a little different. And so this is what we're going to make today. And it's a good thing that March I need a lot of birthday cards because I'm making a lot. Okay. And this really is very simple to make. It's fun. It pops open. It's interactive. But it's easy. Let's get going. First thing we're going to do, see this is a new, this is Starry Sky. This is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock that I've cut at four and a quarter. So now we have four and a quarter by 11. It's gonna have a fuzzy on me. Then I'm going to turn this a long ways in my scoring, using my scoring tool. And I'm going to score at four and a quarter and five and a half. We've done this little book binding fold in the past as well. I'm going to need this again in a minute so we can fold this on a five and a half inch side. Give it a little burnish. Fold it back on the four and a quarter inch score line. And there we have it. When we put this together, we end up with a little bit of a spine here on our card. Ours today is going to be in portrait mode. So our spine will be at the top and our card will flip up like so. For the front of our card, we need a piece of pattern or designer series paper that is Let me get my measurements. Four inches, four inches by five and one eighth. Five and an eighth. Great. Did it right this time. And then we are going to trim off one and one eighth. One and one eighth. The last time I did one and a quarter, didn't mean to. One and one eighth, leaving us with a four by four inch square for the bottom of our card base. And this one and one eighth inch piece for on that spine. This way our design, if you're using a directional or a design paper, has a nice flow to it. Cool beans, cool beans. I'm also going to add, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a ribbon around the top. Now my first one, I wrapped it around the whole card. This time though, we're going to put the ribbon on the inside so that it is adhered to the card. So let's put down our front panels first. Put our four by four section in the bottom half of the card base, trying to get it centered. And then we'll line this little one and one eighth inch section on the top, lining it up. And it goes pretty much right along the edge of that score line. And that'll give you a nice border on the top and keep your sides even. Now we can, if you're gonna use ribbon or string or twine or whatever you might have, let's put this along the top and tie a little 
info. Stay straight. So how's everybody doing? Hope you're all well. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you for commenting and liking the videos. I have been so excited about how many people actually have been commenting. It's great. Down there a little bit more even. Move my bow. This is um, Starry Sky. Metallic woven ribbon. Very pretty. A little bit of shimmer in there. Then we can take. Get my ribbon twisted around. I should say untwisted. Turn over. Maybe I'm not going to. Sure. Come on. Well, I am going to one way or another. Get it twisted on the front here. Yeah, it took three minutes to make the card and 10 minutes to untwist the ribbon, right? Okay. That's better. <sighs> so what's everybody working on? I finally am getting some of my journals caught up. Alice in Wonderland is bound and um, I have a lot of little pockets and stuff made in it. Okay, then let's glue this shut. See that did come out um, twisted on the inside. I don't care about the inside because it's going to be glued down. I'm going to use some double sided tape to make sure that that is stuck on there tight. And for my folks that watch who come to the workshops, remember that this month's workshop was changed and we'll meet on, oh, let's hope I get this right. Maybe I should double check before I say anything. I think it's the 28th. Whoops. Yep, the 28th at noon. Everybody's getting busy, busy. So, if you are local and you want to join us, we always like having friends come and make cards. You can, here, I'll put this back up here. Can email me at Diana Boho for any information or if you have questions. Love to have you. Okay. okay. So let's squeeze this little spine to get oops, pulled the cap off of my <laughs> off my take your pick tool. I'm gonna get my release paper off of this tape. Close this up. I'm hoping to do both of those videos for tomorrow. I have um, I'm meeting my one friend. I did candy orders for one of our animal rescue groups here. And I'm meeting her tomorrow. She always takes that order form to her bowling league. For me and they are real supportive thanks wanda love having all those people help out the furry friends okay and there is the base of our card for our front greeting i have 
you can adjust these sizes to meet the needs of the stamp that you're using. Okay, this stamp is the one I chose for the front of my card, which was kind of big. I mean, these these stamps are huge, and and sometimes that's great when that's what you want. It's a nice big bold greeting. I didn't want to cover up all my pretty paper, so. This, in this particular stamp will work best on, what did I make mine? This is a two inch by three inch piece of white. I'm going to stamp a starry sky. And then I have a piece of Starry Sky cardstock that is two and a quarter by three and a quarter. Is that really crooked? No, I don't know why it looked crooked to me. Put that little stamp away. Okay. While we have the ink out, our inside is going to need two white squares that are two and three quarters by two and three quarters. These are going to be in our card diagonally. So whatever font, sentiment, image, whatever you're going to put on the inside will need to fit across your squares diagonal. I actually chose the Starry Balloon. Ooh, look at all that ink I got on there. And I can add this balloon on here diagonally because I'm going to add two balloons so they don't have to be going up and down straight but if you're putting uh, an image on there that is going to be the only one you use you're probably going to want it to be straight right and then my other balloon says, yay. Just keep this one going a little bit that way. And Then on the bottom of my inside, I'm going to use the stamp. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna use light them up, and it has some cute little candles. screen here. Run out of room. Also have a little kitty cat hair on there. Okay. And that is the end of the stamps room balloon bash that we're going to use. So let's close the ink up before I stick my hand in there. And we'll get to making our inside. Did I keep my Winkastella? I did. I want to put some Winkastella on my candles. Okay. 
All right, for our inside, we need a piece of coordinating paper that is six by six. And again, this is from the Dainty Flowers, and yes, I'm gonna ruin one of the wreath designs, but I want the watercolor section to be on the inside of my card. I'm going to fold this in half. And then fold it in half the other way. Must be a squirrel outside. And then we're going to fold this diagonally only once, not both directions, just one direction. We'll do a diagonal fold in half. I even over there. Give that a burnish. Then let's take this diagonal fold and we'll just give it a crease in the other direction. Because we're going to make that part, actually I should have folded them the opposite of what I did, right? We want these two diagonal folds to crease in. Oh, no, I did have it right. This is my inside. This is what I want on the inside. I can't make this bend. What in the world? <laughs> it's not hard. Really, it isn't. What am I doing wrong here? Nothing. Oh, uh, maybe. Maybe I just need to give that a little encouragement. Now let's try. This is so silly. There we go. Don't don't lose it now. Come on. You too. Bend up this way. My first one went together so easy. All I did was squeeze these and it just folded on its own. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Stay. Stay. If my fingers work better, it would be helpful. There we go. Ah. Oh. How's that for crazy? There we are. And now it, it pops up. See, it really does work, and you guys probably will get that done much faster than I. Then I can use my little stamped squares and center them in my top and bottom panels. Okay. <laughs> my fingers just did not want to hold on to that. I love this watercolor design on the dainty flowers. I think I used quite a bit of it up. That's why I'm busting into the wreath one because it had a watercolor design on the back as well. And uh, as much as I like the wreaths, I really like this paper. There we go. All right. We can glue our happy birthday onto the 
Starry Sky Matte. Centered. Okay, there's our little bits. There's the card. Card opens up with a little spine. Now we want to take the back panel of our pop up. It's going to fit right inside our card with all of the corners meeting the edges of the base. Make sure you have your back face down on your card, or I'm sorry, not face down, but the right direction on your card base. Get that one glued on. I'll double check it before I get it centered in base. There we go. Now I can add adhesive to the top panel. Right on top. Glue her all up. And close your card. Have our happy birthday. You can add foam dimensionals to this. I'm going to just adhere it flat on my card front because the pop-up is making it a little bit thicker anyway. I'm not going to add more bulk. Get out of there a little ribbon. <laughs> Everything has a mind of its own today. Really. Now, ta-da! Here it is. Balloon bash. Did it. Made a card in less than a half an hour. Yay! So, I hope you like it. I hope you give it a try. Pull out some of those stamp sets that you have. I am going to have to adjust this little bow because that's just going to drive me crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's going to get a glue dot to make them stay where I want them to stay. Give it a try. Send out some, like I said, it's a good thing. I have a lot of birthdays in March. I actually need like five cards within the next couple weeks here. So I get these all addressed and ready to go. And then be back tomorrow with, see my fingers really don't work well. I don't know if it's because the, my skin's so dry or if just in my old age, my old decrepit state here. There we go. Better. Um, they don't do what I want them to do as easy. And I think I am going to use a glue dot to make it stay. Not flip flop around. There we go. There. Better. Better, better. All right, guys. Now that I've turned it completely upside down, can you believe that I just did that? <laughs> Again, three minutes for the card, ten minutes for the ribbon. That's why I use my little bow maker on most of the cards. There. And I'm just not going to touch it because it's where I like it. All right. Until tomorrow or next week. Whatever. Remember, thumbs up. Keep crafting, you guys. Thanks. Bye.